Open our minds, O Lord, that we may know you. Open our hearts, that we may love you. Open our lives, that we may take your gospel to the world. Amen. Amen. Two of the most dreaded words in the English language in our day, I think, are these. Transaction declined. (laughs) Imagine, or maybe you don't have to imagine, your terror at the cashier in the grocery store with a line of impatient customers behind you and the credit card machine flashing angrily. Transaction declined. Imagine the humiliation of a first date when the server approaches you sheepishly and asks for another member method of payment. Transaction declined. In these circumstances, we are confronted with the basic principle of our social and economic order. Just about everything is understood as a transaction. What you receive is tied to whether you can pay the price or do the favor. The idea of transaction has infiltrated just about everything we experience. What we're worth in a relationship has to do with how much we have to offer, how impressive our dating profile is. Salaries are tied to accomplishments or at least determine our worth. Olympic medals given according to performance. Even the church has succumbed to transaction ideology. It would be almost impossible not to. Size and economic power matter and have mattered since the age of Constantine. In my Anglican formation group with students at the BU School of Theology, we are almost finished reading a book called The Dream of God by Verna Dozier. She was an African-American lay theologian and teacher who died in 2006. In this book, Dozier reflects on how the church as an institution has bought into the mentality of transaction, of the zero-sum game where my gain is your loss and vice versa. She writes, There is little difference between the values of the kingdoms of the world regarding money, prestige, human solidarity, and power, and the values of the church. Acquisition of material wealth, the bid for status, the fracturing of community, and the struggle for control mark the life of the institutional church as they mark any other institution. Is this true? I think it's true of any human institution, including the church, because we are human. The tendency to want security, to make life something we can control and understand, is part of our creatureliness. As creatures, we are contingent, dependent, vulnerable, limited. Transactions are concrete, tangible, measurable. They give us the illusion of control. It is a tantalizing illusion to be sure, but is it the dream of God for us? Is this the world Jesus wants for us? Not just in the church, but everywhere. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. What does a life of mercy instead of transaction look like? This part of Jesus' Sermon on the Plain lays it out for us. Love your enemies, do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return. Translation, step away from the transactional life and look at how God is in the world showering all alike with abundance, regardless of their ability to return the favor. Now, doing good to those who hate you, blessing those who curse you, praying for those who abuse you, 
on their own, these things are not good news for the downtrodden. They should not be taken as instructions for those who are abused just to shut up and take it. Remember uh, Jesus' first sermon in Luke, as he reads from the prophet Isaiah in the synagogue, God has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, to let the oppressed go free. So abuse has no place in the dream of God. Abuse has no place, and so the flip side of what we hear from Jesus today is that as we do good to those who hate us, we also protect those who are hated and cursed and abused without needing recompense for such protection. We do it simply because God is merciful, and as followers of Jesus, we seek to become like God. We are becoming like God. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Mercy is so much more than forgiving when we're hurt or picking up the check without needing to be reimbursed. Mercy is that good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, put into our laps and into the laps of all who seek God. Not counting the cost, but simply living, giving, and receiving with joy. The other day, my spiritual director asked me what my image of the dream of God was. And I imagined at first a gathering around a table with plenty of food, no expectations to be life of the party. It's very important for introverts not to have to be the life of the party. Where there's a place for everyone and especially a place for the stranger. A table without transactions, like this table here in our midst. But then another image came to me, and it was the winter walk for homelessness that took place last week and some of us here at St. Paul's participated in. We gathered on Copley Square in the snow. Some of us had paid a registration fee, some of us had pledged to fundraise, and some who walked couldn't do either of those. They were just there to bear witness. And so we gathered to hear the experience and the prayers of the homeless, to be inspired by civic leaders, and to give voice for hope. And then as a community, we walked together. And along the way, those who had planned the walk stood at strategic points to show us the way, and this is so important, to cheer us on. Whether we were at the front of the pack, at the back, somewhere in the middle, whether we had pledged or donated or not, we received the same support and affirmation. We walked as a community. And when we returned to Copley Square, there were folks with trays of breakfast sandwiches for everyone, except perhaps the gluten-free among us, and that's a problem, so they have to fix that next year. <laughs> but the theory was for, for all of us. And it didn't matter, again, if you had paid your registration fee, if you had joined the walk on a whim, or if you had slipped in just for the breakfast sandwich. It didn't matter. We all received the same nourishment with joy and congratulations. You made it. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, was put into our lap. That's not only what the church should be, what church is, it's what our world should be. That is the dream of God. So what is your image of the dream of God made manifest in our world? 
What is your alternative to the grasping after power and status and wealth? What do you imagine is God's response to the message, transaction declined? Instead of a world in which transactions may be declined if you can't pay, can we imagine a world that declines transaction, period? What in your heart does that look like? Be merciful just as God is merciful. How are you, how are we, being called to dream God's dream and see that dream come to life in the communities around us? Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine.